Hey everyone, we donated a sterling dish to a community in the Philippines. And in today's video, I'll be updating you on our gift of Starlink high-speed internet we donated earlier this year. Let's jump in. Hi, I'm Joe Masick, Portfolio Manager and Investment Advisor for IA Private Wealth, helping guide and counsel investors for over 23 years. Welcome to Investing Made Simple, where you can find the most trusted information on building your net worth. Late in 2022, around the holidays, we donated a Starlink dish to a community in the Philippines. I was exceptionally happy to have announced that we would be sending the gift of Starlink high-speed internet to a community in need. And I'm super excited to share with you that the dish has been purchased, sent, and is now operating in Dumaro, a remote area in the Philippines. However, this is far from the end of the story, and there were so many interesting things that I had learned in the last five to six months about some of the challenges I faced while going through this process. So I would like to take the opportunity to go back to the very beginning of this story and share how this idea came around, why I'm so passionate about it, what has changed since we started, and my new goals for the future. To really get a full understanding of how and why this idea came to fruition, we have to go back a few years to early 2020 at the start of the pandemic. Now, I know this part of the story may seem like it's not really relevant to how we donated a dish to a community in the Philippines, but I think if you'll bear with me and allow me to give you a little bit of background, it will go a long way in helping you appreciate why I'm so passionate about doing this. So back in 2020, I, like many others with less to do during the lockdowns, decided to try to build a channel on YouTube and start learning how to edit videos and create content. As a result, my YouTube content consumption increased dramatically, and I started consuming knowledge on all sorts of what I thought were interesting topics like how to build a channel, what rental arbitrage in Airbnb was, how to smelt aluminum, and of course, videos on Elon Musk, Starlink, and SpaceX. And while I've always followed Elon Musk since his early days by keeping up on his initiatives with The Boring Company, Tesla, SpaceX, and Neuralink, it was at this time that I really started to watch some excellent channels detailing the plan and SpaceX had in creating the Starlink internet satellite constellation. Videos from Real Engineering and Undecided with Matt Farrell were simply incredibly made videos and gave me some amazing insight into how this internet constellation would work. I learned all about how the satellites would be deployed, how the various latency worked, and more importantly, how this would likely be a game changer for the world. But 2020 was also a special year because as I was watching the future of Starlink unfold before my eyes, I was wondering if there was any way that I could possibly participate in the growth of SpaceX as I knew that SpaceX was a private company and it would be very difficult to obtain shares if not impossible. And just as I was thinking about how awesome it would be to become a shareholder, very soon after I was presented with that very opportunity I was looking for, a chance to invest in SpaceX private shares. And it didn't take me very long to buy some up, so to speak. Also, when the Starlink internet service was available in my area in Canada, I purchased a dish personally for my home as my internet connection always seemed to be somewhat intermittent, so we use it as a backup connection in case we need it. And I have to tell you, it's a fantastic piece of technology. So with all that said, reason number one as to why I am so passionate, I am a SpaceX shareholder and a Starlink customer, so I think it goes without saying that I believe heavily in the mission of Starlink and SpaceX as a whole. Now at the time I invested, SpaceX had just launched NASA astronauts Robert Behnken and Douglas Hurley on the very first man Crew Dragon mission. And if I can recall, they had approximately 600 Starlink satellites in orbit, and Starlink was not yet operational. Over the next three years, I consumed every piece of information I could on Elon Musk, SpaceX, and their development of the network. Thankfully, much of the content was on YouTube, and I believe that YouTube is a key platform where you can truly learn anything you want to learn. As an example, I am currently learning how to code from a Harvard computer science course, souping up my son's electric car so that it goes faster, learning how to pick locks for fun from the lock picking lawyer, and catching up on the financial news that is on YouTube. I am of course also creating and sharing my own educational content on making
making the process of investing simpler for everyone. I truly believe you can learn anything online by watching YouTube. Did you know that courses from MIT, Harvard, and many Ivy League schools are already online and on YouTube? All of this information is there. You can learn any course you want. However, if you do not have the internet or at least inexpensive high-speed internet where you aren't paying astronomical fees for data, you are essentially locked out from learning information. I believe easy access to all of the world's information should be available to everyone. Which brings me to reason number two as to why I'm so passionate. I believe very strongly in bridging the information divide by doing my part in helping the approximately 30 to 40 percent of the world's population gain access to the educational capabilities that the internet provides. Education is the foundation upon which businesses and innovation are built. And with that, I believe we can all meaningfully improve the quality of life around the world simply by removing any financial barriers to accessing the internet. So those are the two main reasons I am so passionate about donating high-speed internet to communities in need. But how did this idea start? Well, since I've learned of the Starlink constellation, I always thought it would be pretty cool to try to donate a dish to a community in need, but wasn't sure how to go about it. There was some talk on Twitter asking Elon Musk to make it possible to donate Starlink dishes, and very soon after he made that an option on the Starlink website. It was then that I really started to investigate it. However, it really wasn't until I read an article from Quartz that really drove me to act on my idea without any further delays. You see, in this article, it talked about Starlink being available in Nigeria and Mozambique. And the author goes on to describe how Starlink's download speeds are nearly five times higher than the highest median download speed recorded in Nigeria. However, the author also goes on to point out that access to Starlink begins with affordability, yet Starlink may be too expensive for its ideal rural consumers in Africa. After a price review in March, it now costs a one-time fee of $599, formerly $499 for the dish and router, and $110, formerly $99 for a monthly subscription. A premium product here costs $2,500 for installation and $500 in monthly fees. Squared against 40% poverty rates in Nigeria and Mozambique, an annual outlay of $1,919 for first-time users in rural areas looks rather optimistic. The average annual living wage in Nigeria, Africa's largest economy, is $864. Those who can afford Starlink would appear to be urban, socially upward people like Fosudo, who already had access to the internet anyway. And even for people like him, Starlink is costly. So basically the author is saying Starlink is an excellent idea, but why is Elon building this internet for the world when no one he is trying to serve can actually afford it? Hearing that affordability could be an issue, I decided at that moment I was going to be a person to help prove the author wrong. Because one thing the author may not have considered is the possibility that someone like me would come along and look to donate dishes. So that's exactly what I did on behalf of myself and my clients as a part of a holiday donation in lieu of holiday cards. I started to look at where I could purchase and support dishes in various countries around the world. First, I looked to the Starlink map as to where the service was available. My first thoughts were to support India and Zimbabwe as I had immediate connections to those countries with people I knew. However, Starlink wasn't yet available there. I also knew some people with connections to the Philippines and El Salvador, and in those countries, Starlink was in fact switched on. So in December, I made a small announcement on behalf of myself and my clients that we would be ordering high-speed internet services to a community in need and ordered my first dish for this initiative. I chose a small community in the Philippines to start off with as I didn't know how this was going to turn out. Ordering a dish to another country was quite the experience as I entered the address and I got billed in Philippine pesos. In fact, my monthly cost is also in pesos, which I thought was kind of cool. When I converted it back to Canadian dollars though, I found my monthly cost is about half what I am being charged in Canada. 2,700 pesos monthly converted back to Canadian dollars is about 65 bucks. Compare that with my Starlink services in Canada, I'm paying $156.80 or about two and a half times more. I was actually pleasantly surprised as I fully anticipated a similar cost to Canada. And now we are looking at other dishes in the areas to support schools and so forth. More on how that came about later in the video. So from the time I ordered the dish to the community actually receiving it, it took almost exactly a month. I sent the tracking information to the recipients and once they had received the dish, that's when the excitement grew. However, this was the first time I ordered the dish and it was on my account. So Elon Musk or SpaceX, if you're watching, it would be very helpful if you improve this part of the process. In order to get the dish to work, I had to share my account and password with the recipients 
recipients as there is no way to separate the two. They had to log into my account and set up the dish. However, they had some trouble with it and hired a local tech expert, Oliver, to get it running. Oliver told me that he also had to get help because quite frankly, this was the first time Oliver had seen this technology live and was one of the very first internet dishes sent to the Philippines. After some consultation, they got it working and it was installed. I was exceptionally happy to see the dish that I had ordered working in the Philippines. More to the story here later in the video. In the meantime, I'm going to send a message to SpaceX and what I really would love you to do with the Starlink app is to improve it so that if you are going to order a dish for another country and pay for it, please at least set up a master admin for the account and have the ability to add separate users via text or email so that the user can set up their own username and password for the dish and set up the dish without logging into my account. This would be awesome because they wouldn't be able to see all of my sensitive information like credit card information, emails, and my usage at home with my own dish. If you can make this small but amazing improvement, it would be exceptionally helpful. But I digress. So the recipients got the dish working and finally the community has the internet. The people in charge of the dish ensure the login information is freely accessible to anyone in the community that wants to use it. However, there are a few things that I have learned since the dish was installed. Things that I hadn't considered. First, Starlink was charging me extra for mobile service, which I couldn't figure out why they were doing that when the dish wasn't mobile. In fact, for security purposes, I didn't want the dish mobile because if it were ever removed for whatever reason, the dish would not work. The benefit of a standard plan, in addition to it being inexpensive, is you can geofence the dish so that it only works in that one area where it's set up. For some reason, the plan I was on was mobile, so I changed back to a standard plan. I soon got a message from the people that were in charge of the dish that the dish stopped working. It was only then that I had found out when Oliver got help in setting up the dish, the dish was set up almost 70 kilometers away where it should have been set up, hence the need for mobile. Starlink support though is really top notch and I was able to get the correct coordinates, input them, and Starlink support updated the information. Now the dish works and only in that area. Second, I noticed the dish also not working for a few days and reached out to see why the dish wasn't live. Turns out this area in the Philippines during the summer is subject to rolling power blackouts. Being from Canada and having access to what I now know is a luxury of consistent reliable power from Manitoba Hydro, thank you Manitoba Hydro for all that you do, it never occurred to me that consistent reliable power would be something that I would have to worry about. But in certain areas in the Philippines, it is. So I started to troubleshoot solutions for the blackout issues and spoke to them regarding the obvious ideas like solar power and battery backup. They mentioned that they had actually investigated solar power and battery backup to help with power outages. However, they also let me know that they opted against this option as the Philippines has as many as 25 typhoons that batter the islands every year. Now we are going to be working with that community to perhaps send some more portable solar panels along with some small battery backups. Enough to power the dish full time and maybe some small electrical like phone chargers, fans, and so forth. But once again, I'm reminded of just how fortunate I am to live in a country like Canada as typhoons and hurricanes are not existent and tornadoes, while they do exist, are rare. Thankfully, the blackouts are not too bad. However, it does put a few checkboxes on my list to ask when we are considering adding additional dishes for support. Like, do you have reliable power? Another interesting development happened after the dish was installed. I was soon approached by several schools to see if I would consider donating internet to them, and we are currently working on providing more coverage there along with my recent connections in El Salvador. One of the schools even put together a video, a small sample of which I will share with you. Salcedo Elementary School is one of the 29 complete elementary school in the district of Dumarao. It is situated in the southern part of the municipality of Dumarao, Capiz, Philippines. The children enjoyed ample water supply from what Sun Project of UNICEF. Though the school is not fully equipped with ICT facilities, athletics, industrial arts facilities, science, music laboratories, and other learning with equipment and materials, its pupils still excel in academic, literary, and sports, be it in the lower or higher competition. At present, it has 179 enrollment taught by 8 teachers. The school ground has 25% permanent perimeter fence. More than 80% of the pupils' parents do not have fixed income. 
and are unemployed. They rely on their meager income by working in the farm. But still, parents have been very supportive when it comes to the school programs and projects. Most of the time, teachers handle classes with the help of teacher-made support instructional materials. But it would take more time in making these aids and it could be more interesting and easy for students to learn if teacher uses varied techniques in teaching, like employing interactive learning with the application of online lessons. The school's current situation signifies that it needs support from stakeholders to improve its delivery of instructions. Thus, we humbly ask help and be our partners, Sir Joe Masek and Sir Dave Rogers, in order to materialize our aspiration to have free internet connection in our school. Your kindness will surely leave a legacy to all of us in the academy. Your investment to our school children's future would always be treasured and engraved in our hearts. Thank you so much, Sir Joe Mises. Overall, this has been an exceptionally rewarding experience from start to finish, and I'm looking forward to connecting more communities around the world. If you wish to do something similar, I would highly encourage you to donate a dish to a community in need. I put all of the links to Starlink in the description below. However, just in case you feel you may not be able to donate a dish for whatever reason, I do think you should know that just by watching my videos and supporting this channel with views, shares, likes, and becoming a subscriber, not only are you educating yourself with the most trusted information on Canadian financial content, you're automatically supporting this amazing initiative as proceeds from this channel will help go to the costs of funding the dishes, the monthly fees, along with any other equipment needed to support the connection. So once again, thank you for watching. You are making the world a better place. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing as there is no cost to doing it. And be sure to darken the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new content. Well, that's it for this video. Until next time, this is Joe Masick for Investing Made Simple. See you soon.